Hey there, beautiful day at Raleigh City Farm today and we're harvesting for our last farm stand for the season. And I know that's probably pretty crazy if you've seen watching the videos, there's still a lot of food out here and I think as a grower, I can't stop growing food. And we're trying to transition a lot of the beds into cover crops for the winter and we're gonna, still gonna be doing that but we do have a lot of food out here. So I wanna take a few minutes to tell about you about what the plans are moving forwards into the winter and into next spring. And also, just reflect a little bit about this season and it's been a crazy year. I just wanna show you some of the stuff we got going out in the field still right now. We got tatsoi, mustard greens, lettuce mix, baby kale mix, carrots, radishes, more kale, more lettuce, more lettuce. Lots of great stuff out here. Let me show you some other stuff. So hopefully we're not too late in the season. We got some broccoli here. We've had mixed results. Uh, we had to really keep the rabbits out when they were early, uh, but I think they made through insects and stuff for the most part. And we got some broccoli starting to come out so hopefully these will uh we'll get these eventually but you know things are looking super great out here we've been really utilizing the tarping of or using landscape fabric over beds to terminate baby greens it's been crucial uh it just takes out so much effort and we leave all that organic matter in the ground so again if you're if you're trying that out the best thing to do is harvest it low put down some compost and water it in and then put the landscape fabric on in the summertime it's probably a week until it's ready you can plant right into it um, lately we've just been covering them because we don't need them super fast it takes a little bit longer and you know we got some more lettuce out here and some carrots and you know we're in Raleigh North Carolina zone 7b so we should be good for a little while longer I'm sure we'll get a sneak frost coming in but some of the stuff will probably make a light you know make it through a light frost and uh, we should have some stuff you know into the fall and into the winter and you know we're planting out the tunnel really well so let me show you what's going on in there so much going on in here and man the production in the tunnel is always so much better than the field I know I say that all the time but proof is in the pudding right so we got two big beds of that red Russian kale if you guys have been following along since the spring we had a bed in here that was just cranking out so I figured let's get two beds started in here that we can harvest for a while and we're gonna do our first harvest off this kale today and that should regenerate over and over and over again as long as uh, we take care of it this lettuce is, uh, was planted recently, it's coming in great. The peppers are still cranking in here, and so we're gonna keep them as long as we can because they're awesome <laughs> and they're still producing. So we'll probably follow this up with some more greens. I'm not sure what yet, but probably something um, direct seeded, uh, probably in a few weeks. But yeah, look at this in here, it looks awesome. Well, I feel like I'm always the one doing peppers, but check it out, another full tote, unbelievable. Um, I feel like I'm always getting stuck with that job, but I actually love harvesting peppers. It's very productive, it's awesome. All right, wow, we got that harvest done pretty quickly this morning, considering how much we did. And definitely our biggest harvest of the year, finishing out strong. And yeah, some of the stuff we harvested, if you guys are curious, uh, you know, we were growing those sweet potatoes and we still have a couple beds. We've been harvesting the greens and selling those. So that's been cool. Green onions, uh, the Italian sweet peppers, obviously we do herbs, lettuce, tatsoi, a baby kale mix, okra. There's our last crop of okra. We also did uh, full-size red Russian kale and some carrots today. So yeah, big yield and we'll have a good last farm stand. And you're probably wondering, you know, you guys, as I said before, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in the field. And hopefully you know that I've told, talked about this before where whatever we don't sell, we are donating to, um, you know, there's a place in Raleigh that's a pay what you can uh, uh, restaurant and we also have some other uh, places that we bring food to that give food to needy people and so what we're gonna be doing now over the winter time is because the farm stand is closing and we're not gonna be doing that every week we're gonna be donating 100% of the food that we grow and the way this is made possible is because the nonprofit has raised money through a fundraiser this uh, this month we did um, all month we've been doing a, a ongoing fundraiser you know, we have a good amount of funding now to carry us through the winter, and so we're doing our best to help feed our community in not in a different way um, than we were before and that we were selling food to our community. But now we're gonna be donating our food to people in need uh, full on. And so we're not gonna slow down our production that much. Uh, as, I, as you guys know, I am planting as many cover crops as possible, but there's still a lot of food that's out in the field. And as we get the greenhouse on board in early December, we'll be planting that out and all the food in the high tunnel as well. So we're still gonna be producing food uh, throughout the winter, just it'll be full donation. And uh, it's gonna feel great, it's just gonna be different. And you guys probably know that, you know, the way I run the farm part of the nonprofit is really like a for-profit enterprise because that's kind of my style. So we're really gonna stick to that, you know, minimizing time and labor and inputs and stuff like that. And 
you know, try to make it as efficient as possible. So it looks like we got a little bit of a passing shower right now. I'm just chilling for a minute. I'm gonna go back out and I, I gotta flip a bed before the day's over. I got that bed of cover crop planted and just thinking about back to the spring when we had our first farm stand and how amazing of a accomplishment that was and how great it felt to be putting out food to our community. So it's been almost an hour since we've been open and we're going to be doing these farm stands Wednesday nights from 4 to 7 and the response today has just been incredible. Uh, people stopping by from the community and it just feels really special. I know I say that a lot, but the community support's been great. The weather's fantastic today. It's also Earth Day. It's just an awesome uh, moment for Raleigh City Farm and for myself. I just feel, you know, feel great about it. And after the season's wrapping up, it feels just as good to think about all the stuff that happened this year and all the people. And even with all the things going on with COVID and how our things have been, you know, try to look on the bright side of things and think about the positive things going on and uh, how we can help out. And so we're just getting the farm stand started up for tonight for the final farm stand of the season. So. We'll see how that's going. Farm stand's going strong. I uh, got a great crew out here tonight and the weather's lovely. And I found someone that just showed up with a no-till grower's hat. So I want you to meet somebody. Hey Jen, thanks for stopping by today. I know we've been walking around chatting and stuff, but tell, tell everyone like you came from Colorado and what yeah, you to? Yeah, flew in today from Colorado, Colorado Springs actually. Um, came to see Josh and tour Raleigh City. And then on Friday, we're gonna go meet with Michelle at Farm Belly and tour her farm. That's, so that's amazing. Just coming out on a farm tour trip. Okay, so what do you think about Raleigh City Farm today? Love it. Well, I've been watching Josh this whole time, seeing the, tra the transition from when he started in February, and it's beautiful here. He's done an amazing job. Right. So, thanks thank for, you. Thanks for yep. stopping by. And do you have an Instagram people can check you out? Yes. Um, 111 Neighborhood Farm All right. on Instagram. All right, I'll put that in the link down below. Great, thank you. Thanks, Jen. Well, it was super great of Jen to stop by, and a bunch of other people came by too and had some unbelievable conversations. And it's truly awesome to be able to connect with people in person. and. It's this whole digital internet thing that I talk about and you know it's great to connect with people and um, just, you know walk around the farm and let them experience it and just get to know people a little bit better and you know this sun's going down tonight and it's just beautiful out here and we're able to sell our produce to our community and I'm really looking forward to this fall and winter as we grow more food and donate it to you know needy people in our area and it's super special and just an awesome thing we got going on here so that's what I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.